Hello folks, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the new X1 Micro Laser Welder from X Laser Lab. This is a 400 watt semiconductor pulse welder that can weld steel and aluminum sheets ranging from as thin as 0.2 millimeters and up to 2 millimeters thick. And it can do this cleaner, easier, more efficiently, and safer in both dry and wet environments than traditional welders can, without the need for welding rods, wire, or special gases. This is one of two portable and highly versatile welder machines that X Laser Lab is launching soon on Kickstarter, the other being the X1 Pro, which is a 720 watt fiber laser welder that not only welds steel, aluminum, and copper sheets ranging from 0.5 millimeters up to 3 millimeters thick, it can also clean rust and corrosion, perform cutting tasks, and it can be used with a wire feed for welding thick materials. Setup is really simple. You just need to connect the ground clamp and gas line in the back, then power it up and it's ready to go. As I mentioned earlier, no special gases are needed. You can run the machine on compressed air without harming it and get satisfactory welds, but X Laser Lab does recommend using nitrogen or argon to get the best results. I picked up a tank of nitrogen and a flow meter regulator and hose from a local supplier, but I needed a 5 8 18 to quarter inch NPT adapter to connect the flared hose end to this NPT quick connect for the tubing that was provided with the welder. But they didn't have it in stock, and it probably won't be here for another week, so in this video I just focused on testing with compressed air. It's hard to see the number display in the video for some reason, but the first control on the left is for laser power, which I set to 60% for spot welding 1mm thick carbon steel for the first test. The next control on the right is for adjusting the pulse interval time, which determines the span of time between the start of one pulse to the start of the next pulse, and I set that to 25. The middle control is for adjusting the pulse width, which is the length of time that each pulse will last, and I set that to 15. The shape of the torch tip pretty much explains how to hold it against the material, and the red button on the side is the laser fire button, which won't fire unless it's in contact with the material. It does emit a red focus dot to help aim the laser beam where it needs to be, because it's so small that it is easy to miss your mark without it. I'm also wearing the provided laser shielded glasses to protect my eyes. You'll notice that there is a bit of soot produced during the welding process, kind of like you would see with flux core but it brushes off in seconds and there's absolutely no smoke or toxic fumes or smells of any kind being released into the air, and no spatter or any other sort of mess being made. These spot welds seem to work okay. Again, there's no filler material being used. The welds are only about a millimeter wide and a bit hard to see in the video, but they look really clean. Of course, the big question is how strong are they? You can see some heat penetrated to the bottom side, but we'll find out how strong they are at the end of the video. Next, I spot welded two pieces of stainless steel. In the second attempt, I tried traditional spot welding, but I fired the torch for too long with too much power and ended up burning clean through the material. But that just means it has the potential for good penetration. It's just a matter of using the right settings and speed. Next, I tried running some continuous weld beads by moving at a slower speed to overlap the pulses, which worked out really well. Next, I tried spot welding some 2mm thick stainless steel together. The settings that I used for this thicker material was 80% for power, 40 for pulse interval, and 20 for pulse width. My aim isn't the greatest because I have a hard time seeing through welding shields in general without contact lenses, 
so I had to stop and restart a couple of times, but it looks like the welds turned out good regardless. Something that I found really interesting was this machine's ability to safely weld underwater without needing special gear. Bear in mind that the entire machine can't be submerged, only the copper torch tip. But I can imagine this would be useful to help dissipate heat and prevent distortion when welding thinner materials. Again, I had an especially hard time seeing what I was doing without contacts, compounded by light refracting under the water. You can see the first weld seemed to work good, but it missed the mark completely, and the second weld resembles a bad flux core weld. But I managed to compensate for the image distortion, and run a good bead on the third attempt. Finally, I tried bending and breaking the test pieces to see how the welds held up. This was the first piece that was spot welded. I did deform it, but it broke loose eventually. A little more power would solve that, but it's still not bad. It depends on the application. Next, I tested one of the better looking continuous welds. You can see that overlapping the pulses not only creates a continuous bead like you would see with TIG welding, but it also concentrates more power and heat into a given area so the laser can penetrate deeper and produce a stronger weld. I'm pretty happy with this. A bit more fine tuning of the settings and it would be unbreakable by hand. Next I tried the spot welded 2mm thick steel and it broke apart without too much force, as I expected. But the continuous welds were very strong. The steel would bend and break under fatigue before the welds did, assuming that my arms didn't give out first. Finally, I tried the piece that was welded underwater, but despite looking like a strong weld, it didn't seem to be much stronger than the spot welded pieces. It could be due to the water, or the fact that I only managed to get one good weld on one side. It seemed strong when bending in one direction, but it snapped immediately when it was bent in the other direction. So that's it for this video, folks. I personally think this machine, although small, is mighty impressive. It's not suitable for welding thick structural steel, of course, but it wasn't designed for that. I'm sure most of you folks who have experience welding understand how frustrating it can be to weld thin sheet metal with traditional welders because they're usually too powerful and it's easy to end up chasing holes that never seem to stop growing. But the X1 series was built to tackle that problem and make welding in general a safer, cleaner, and easier process for the average person. It's very beginner friendly with a learning curve that's much shallower than traditional MIG or TIG. I can see a machine like this being used for nearly everything sheet metal related from arts and crafts to light auto body work. But let me know what you think of it in the comments, and don't forget to check out their Kickstarter page if you're interested. I put all the details in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to subscribe because in a future video I'll show you how I use the larger X1 Pro Fiber Laser Welder to build a frame for another e-bike project, as if I don't have enough of those on the go already. But until then, thanks for watching and take care folks.